Hello? Welcome back to another Splendiferous video. Today I'm gonna see how much I can accomplish in Foundry in a hundred days. I spent over 24 hours of non-stop gameplay, sleepless nights, and problematic uh, video game addiction to play this game and bring it to you. My review is that Foundry is a pretty cool game. It's almost like combining Factorio, Satisfactory, and Minecraft into one very addictive drug. Mining, jetpacking, and falling from lethal heights all while exploiting natural resources to sell them on the black market, literally controlled by, um, possibly Wall-E. This video has been sponsored by Paradox, so check out the game in my link in the description below. I'd be pretty disappointed in you if you don't do that, and if you don't, you'll suffer immensely. That's not a threat, it's a fact. Day one. Our quest begins with the extraction of minerals from the earth. After a quick scan, it's xenoferrite ore and technomore. Think of these kind of like iron and copper. These are processed to create plates and rods, our two main ingredients to generate factory foundation, necessary for putting everything else onto. Done. First, it's mining and crafting by hand, then using our escape pod's makeshift oven for smelting. And before long, we're up and running with floors to connect power to the biomass generator, belts, miners, and before you know it, the day is through. By day two, we've already got our first smelting columns lined up. Smelting, automated. Built, built. And at the end of day two, it's on to building our first lab for research. Science will plow the way ahead so that I can seed the fields with, um, blue science. Before you know it, day is done. Day three. <laughs> Assemblers researched, smelting columns built, and second lane loaders research for better throughput on our smelting columns already. Day four, it's on to conveyor balancers, scanner gun for igneum ore, which is basically coal for automating power to our base without having to keep coming back and forth to power it by hand with biomass from destroyed plant matter. Check. Now we've got a few assemblers up and building machinery, more factory foundation, and a few other basic goods for our production facility. After all that, it's on to day five for a careful look at the map. Now, the layout of the base plan is to stretch the smelting columns north, the main bus west, and the mining operation east. Mm -hmm. Planning this stuff early ensures that our facilities um, probably won't collide horribly and lead to massive spaghetti mess. B but uh, probably they will anyway, so, uh, day six. Beginning burner power generators, mining igneum ore, and finally automating our scientific research, mainly to be intimidated by a long and complex list of branching technologies. Where to begin? After a lot of bashing my head into the factory floor, what begins to take shape is what my friend Josh calls, um, the circuit boardification. That is to say, whenever you play an automation game after myriad failures, I've learned that unintentionally or intentionally, you'll probably start to make something that starts to resemble the organs of a silicon monster. Maybe that was kind of a weird way of phrasing that. I mean a computer and not something more, uh, adult. Day seven. Coming to the end of our preliminary research, it's time for red science packs, which are like blue science packs, but red, along with lights, ladders, and a basic layout to get us started on our main bus and assemblers. Day eight, it's time to move on up with belt ramps and get more organized because everything is getting already too complicated to explain. Day nine. The first red science pack is pooped out. Steel making research begins, opening new constructions and possibilities. Day 10, steel making's done, and drill, drill, drill our way to faster mining speed, faster assemblers, faster belts, and before you know it, on day 12, we're cranking. So fast that by day 13, it's time to expand the research labs, since we're already producing a surplus lineup of both blue and red science packs. After a little work, by day 17, I had enough spare resources to ascend a makeshift belt and drink in a long gaze at the whole factory from above. So far, so good, except, um, uh, the miners were beginning to run through the xenoferrite ore pretty fast, and uh, we'd need to do a lot more with our resources if we wanted to muster the wherewithal to seek, bomb, and extract more. But where? There was none visible on the map yet, but uh, for now, I guess just never mind that. We'll keep working. Day 19. We construct our first bomb. A success. Along with the ore scanner for Middle Rock, this is a huge boon since it'll let us mine our way to richer subterranean deposits. Only problem is the mineral deposit uh, is located directly beneath the factory. I didn't see that, uh, but we'll tackle this later. These 20 to 25, most of the stuff I did was boring and not worth mentioning, just 
factory management stuff and improving resource flows, but the cool stuff we're researching in the background includes pipes, pumps, high voltage energy, and concrete. Day 27, we unlock tier three, green science. More on this later, but it's a long segue up until day 32 to mine our way to the depths of hell. Uh, since, like I said a few seconds ago, I neglected to realize the mineral rock deposit was indeed located directly beneath my feet. Putting a hole in the ground and coming back up, the circuit boardification has begun. It's time to go on an adventure now. Green science requires concrete, and concrete requires water, and water requires water. So it's time to go to the river to construct uh, just a mile-long floating pipe in midair with no supports. Works. Now we use the crushers and casting machines to take mineral rock and water, and just a ridiculous number of intermediate goods to finally form cubic cubes of concrete. Check. With the floor plane getting pretty busy now, on day 35 it's time to float the concrete well overhead above the rest of the factory with an even longer belt. With all that done, by day 40 we're producing green science and researching the fastest mining speed. Circuit boards, olamite refining, which is kind of like oil, chemical processing, and of course, jetpack fuel. Around day 144, after a lot of work, I constructed an even higher platform up into the sky to see the factory. I climbed the ladder to get a good long look at it from overhead and confirm that everything was, indeed, a lot smaller than it appeared up close. But from this height, it was also readily apparent. Minerals are starting to dry up, so it's time to go seek out more nodes of xenoferrite and technomore elsewhere. That means a field trip through the desert to scope out a large underground deposit hidden from view. Of course, this means dropping a lot of C4 down on the ground to reveal the node. Then blowing up the mountain and stringing power cables to transfer voltage to the next mining site. Unfortunately, the power just didn't work because I didn't know about transformers yet, so I just ran these giant lines of cubes through the sky to transfer power to the mining expansion. It worked anyway somehow, and uh, honestly, I quite enjoy looking at it. After 10 days of ridiculous crisscrossing, zigzagging, and structures that look like they came directly out of a painting by Salvador Dali, we've finally done it. One <laughs> extra lane of Xenoferidor. I thought that would be a lot more impressive. Uh, but that being said, it, uh, indeed, it's no small feat, as it turns out, as this will keep all of our resources from drying up for quite a long time to come. Day 54. It's time to figure out how the hell olamite works, so now we go on another field trip to the reservoir to the north. Mostly, this is a lot of muddling along with pipes, boilers, steam engines, and of course, pump jacks, trying to get uh, something to happen. I managed to get the pump jack operational by day 59, but only with biomass powered by hand, so we're going to have to save this one for a little later on. It's time for some fun. We've now unlocked the elevator, and that means elevation. And that means access to a maximum limit of 253 stories of height, which is about this high. So after five hours of spontaneous elevator and tallification, it becomes very clear to me that I am, um, afraid of heights. Uh, and I am revisited by the unusually familiar feeling of my stomach actually dropping when I fall from a great height, even in video games. Admittedly, kind of cool. Day 61, it's back to work, blowing things up drilling, and expanding the factory for the next liquid modules. By D65, though, it's becoming clear we're running out and we're gonna need even more xenoferrite ore, so we get sidetracked again. This time by a newfound mineral deposit deep below the surface, accessible only through our deep ore scanning. So, after bombing my way 150 stories below the surface to uncover the full node of ore underground, now it's time to put our ridiculous elevator technology to practical use and erect our first deep mine shaft, complete with a circular conveyor belt leading hundreds and hundreds of levels up, round and round the elevator shaft. After a lot of jumping, check, it's over. That'll be enough forever. For now. Day 73, it's back to the surface. Now that I've studied fluid processing, it's time to integrate all that back into our main bus assembly line so that we can start refining olamite into quite possibly the most convenient manufactured good of them all, jetpack fuel. Up until this point, this is literally the whole reason I've been playing this game. And the sensation is nothing short of magic. All the awkward jumping around up until this point has been made somehow worthwhile all for this. Wow. Now we can survey the entire landscape and monitor the factory from above. Seriously, I, I feel like every game should have this. It took forever, but it was pretty worth it. The next few steps are pretty confusing, but here goes. <gasps> Raw, unrefined olamite gets refined into low-density olamite, liquid polymer, and olamite gas. Then, after wastes are burned off, each of those is used to create fuel, polymer boards, and olumic acid. 
There's a lot of other ingredients, but that's the gist of it. The polymer boards and the lumic acid will be used later for circuit boards and energy cells, and the, well, the fuel is just used for fuel. Each of these has a lot of other applications, namely in bringing us to our fourth tier, yellow science. But wait, there's a lot more to it. If we want to make yellow science, we're also going to need firmer light bars, which can only be obtained by fixing a giant destroyed spaceship in the sky. And you might be wondering, how are we going to do that? But uh, now we're going to need to build transport ships to sell robot drones to off-world traders. It's about to get a lot more complicated, but if we want to do all of this, we're going to need to construct a skyscraper-sized radio tower, as well as four or five different warehouses, all of which have just stupidly large footprints that we don't have room for anymore and require insane amounts of voltage to power them. Needless to say, this would, uh, this would be a lot of work for the last 25 days or so, but springing to action. With all that out of the way, it's time to build warehouses, a transport depot, a construction depot, and of course, belt back over all the resources we just blew up in the forest to create. Done. With all the construction materials delivered, our drones can now get to work on the radio tower. And by day 90, we can hit the big red button and begin repairs on the spaceship and perhaps, more importantly, its sales platform. And despite flickering power, we make a, a sale of our extra construction drones anyway, and at last, by day 92, we've imported firmer light bars for the production of yellow science, at last. A little more balancing here and there, and by day 97, we've got a decent flow of science coming in. Unlocking with it, laser miner research, which lets you beam everything in your path from well, from farther away. It all caps off at the end on day 100, knowing, on the one hand, I, I had failed to achieve the highest tier of research, but also a moral victory in the erection of a massive statue of myself, since I am alone. And all I've done is complete uh, the, the errands of an Australian robot. Good enough. The circuit boardification is complete, and there's still honestly a lot to explore. All in all, I'm, I'm honestly pretty satisfied with this game. It, it's pretty unique, and it breaks a lot of new ground. Pun intended. Uh, some of the grand scale of this game's late game technologies really is worth it. Especially if you have friends. Yeah. I know I'm being sponsored for this one, but I definitely think this is one of the cooler experiences I've gotten to try out. And not to mention, uh, it performed really, really well on my computer, and everything just feels polished. And Anyway, if you do decide you want to check out Foundry, I would appreciate it if you give my link in the description a click. Uh, let me know if you want to see any more. And as always, uh, I'm Ambiguous Amphibian. A big thanks to my patrons who, who beep boop boop bop, boop boop beep, and my boop boop bop.